Hi everyone, and welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. Today we're taking a look at one of my favorite arcade games of all time, Street Fighter II Champion Edition, and what to do with Champion Edition if you decide you want to cheat on it a little bit. All right, I've already kind of tipped my hand a little bit and acknowledged that Street Fighter II Champion Edition is really my favorite version of the Street Fighter II franchise and series, and there's a number of reasons for that. I was a big fan of World Warrior when it first came out, and um, like many of you, played it relentlessly, and it was just a phase in gaming that we really hadn't seen before outside of Pac-Man. Many of us were probably too young to remember that. Maybe you're even too young to remember Street Fighter II coming out. If you are, don't tell me that. But when Champion Edition came out, it really unlocked the four boss characters and gave you the ability to play as them, something that wasn't a possibility with the earlier version of World Warrior. Uh, it also unlocked what it called the ultimate feature, which was character versus character. And I remember on the marquee there was this picture of, I think it was Ken versus Ken, and, and that was a big deal at the time. Champion Edition really just builds on the World Warrior in that all of the characters were already there, it just is unlocking the ability for you to play as the boss characters. I know there's some minor tweaks to gameplay, and a lot of people will tell you, and it's true, Bison is an absolute beast in this game and is, has somewhat of an unfair advantage. So if you're playing a game against a partner or a friend, uh, just go ahead and don't be a jerk and pick Bison, um, or you can both be Bison, I guess. Once we start going down the road of Turbo Territory, the game really does seem to morph into something a little different, where the characters have new abilities, uh, Chun-Li's Fireball, most notably, I think, for me, and uh, Hurricane Kicks in midair, the color palette, and let's not forget the word Turbo. The entire speed of the game changed, and I'll be honest, I don't necessarily like that. I like the original version of Street Fighter and, and Champion Edition. I like that speed of gameplay. Once we get into Super Street Fighter and then Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, now we have some major changes. Now, now the game is a lot different than what it was from World Warrior, at least in my opinion. You've got four new characters that have been introduced, none of which really ever stood out for me that I enjoyed playing as. Not to say that they're bad characters, but again, that's just personal opinion. So Champion Edition has always really been the staple for me as far as the pinnacle of the Street Fighter 2 series. But every now and then, I get the urge to cheat on Champion Edition. What some of you may not know, and honestly for myself is relatively new, is that it's pretty easy to upgrade this board to a Turbo Hyper Fighting board. I use the word upgrade loosely. It's really just swapping out three ROM chips, 21, 22, and 23 on the main board. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do that and switch this board over to a hyper fighting board when the mood strikes me and I want to throw a fireball as Chun-Li. Alright, so here's my Champion Edition board. You'll notice the CPS1 board is actually comprised of three boards. The A board on the bottom, the B board, and then up here we have the C board. You'll also notice on the board I have this great little adapter from Jamma Nation that allows me to use a CPS2, CPS3 kick harness on a CPS1 board. So to get started with upgrading this board to a turbo hyper fighting board, we're gonna have to gently remove the C board on top here. It comes off fairly easily. And you'll notice underneath here is where we have those chips I was talking about earlier. We've got 21, 22, and 23. And I'm going to use the chip extractor. You notice it's got two points. Put that under each chip, and then I apply a little bit of pressure while squeezing and I can pull these off pretty easily. So now you got those three chips removed from your board, you're going to want to go ahead and replace those naturally with hyper fighting chips. So we need to burn new ones. So the source files for these are very easy to come by. You just need to download an arcade ROM of Street Fighter II hyper fighting, which can be found in numerous places. Once you have that and extract it, you'll see the files are numbered 21, 22, and 23, and those are the ones we need to go ahead and burn. But you'll notice this is the original chip I pulled off the board, and the model number of the chip is listed at the bottom, the 27C4096. So that's what we're gonna need to replace this with. So I went on eBay and picked up this chip, which you'll notice has the same model number. It's a direct replacement for the original chips on the board, and this is what we're gonna burn 
file 21, 22, and 23 to from our ROM set that we downloaded. So to burn the chips, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Mini Pro chip burner. It's very cheap, it's less than $40, I think, on eBay. It may take you a while to get it if you order from China, but it can be had for less than 40 bucks, and it will do the job. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to be careful of is notice on the top right, the chip orientation, the notch goes at the top, so we're putting the chip in. In this case, we're using all the pin slots, and then just lock the chip like that. The USB goes right into your laptop or desktop, and off we go. The first thing you're going to want to do is to ensure that the software is set up to program the correct type of chip. In this case, the AM27C4096. The next thing I like to do after that is a blank check on the chip to ensure that it truly is empty and ready to be written to. Once we verify that the chip is blank, I'm gonna go ahead and open up file 21 from our Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting ROM. And once that's loaded, I'm gonna go over here to where it says program, click that. We're gonna to write to the chip. And once we're done writing to the chip, you'll notice that it goes back and verifies against the file that we loaded, that 21 bin file. That checks out, we're finished. Once the chip's done burning, I like to use these all-purpose labels. They're a half inch by three quarter of an inch. I picked these up at Rite Aid for, I think, $3. And they fit nicely right over top of the chip's window. So that protects it from being erased. So UV light going into this chip is what would erase the data on it. But also, you're going to want to label the chip correctly so you don't get it confused or plug it in the wrong slot. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this process for chips 22 and 23 and then we're gonna plug them in and try it out. And just for proof of concept, I'm gonna go ahead and show this is the same board we were working on. It's all hooked up, kick harnesses in. I'm gonna scroll right up to our screen and we have Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting. So that's a successful upgrade or downgrade. So that's a really simple upgrade and I think the cool thing about this is you're not irreparably damaging any original hardware. This is completely reversible. So the chips just pop in and out of the socket, which as long as you're careful, you won't do any damage. You'll notice that I'm already back to Champion Edition because that's how much I love hyper fighting. For you, maybe you actually want a hyper fighting board and you can pick up a Champion Edition board more cheaply. This is an easy way to go about upgrading that board. So. As always, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time.